the CrossFit Edwardsville Community Podcast, where we hear and learn from our coaches, CrossFitters, and Glen Ed community leaders. Now, here are your hosts, Dallas and Greg. Hey, hey, everybody. Dallas Amson here. Welcome to the CrossFit Edwardsville Community Podcast, where we get to learn from our CFE coaches. We get to meet and learn some of our CFE CrossFitters, as well as meet and learn, uh, you know, occasionally we get to talk with some of our Glen Ed community leaders and business owners. I am your co-host, although today I am just your host. Coach G is not with us today, but I'm your co-host, Dallas Amston. Uh, I'm, my company is called Communicate to Succeed, and I'm a presentation and digital content consultant for business owners and entrepreneurs, but I'm also a member of the CrossFit Edwardsville community. And I love to have these conversations. And uh, like I said, Coach G isn't with us today, but this would usually be the time I'd say, G, how's it going? And he would say, I'm awesome, Dallas, because he always is. But today we get to have a fun conversation uh, really with one of our newest CrossFit Edwardsville community members. He is our, well, I guess I would say the newest 5 a.m. rock star, uh, <laughs> Troy Ferguson. What is up, Troy? Welcome to the CrossFit Edwardsville community podcast. Good afternoon, Dallas. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man. So uh, uh, officially, Troy, you became a part of the CrossFit Edwardsville community June 4th, 2021. So just, I mean, you are still fresh in the game, dude. Yes, I'm not even six months in. It, uh, I'm not. Even, I think it was that first week for sure. Not exactly sure on the fourth, but it was definitely that first week. So, yeah, but, you, you've only been doing it for four months, according to my count. And and Zen Planner, and I just want everybody to know this: when we say five a.m. rock star, this is what we're talking about, according to the Zen Planner system, Troy. As of October twenty fifth, twenty twenty one, you already have fifty five. CrossFit wads under your belt, which by the way, is secured to a much, you know, you've only been doing CrossFit for four months. That's insane, dude. 55 workouts in the first four months of being a member. So today we get to do, we do get to learn a little bit more about you and find out how and why you are the rock star you are, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I tell you what, I got into it uh, and it didn't take long at all working one-on-one -on -one with the coaches at first and you know, it was just, it was a game changer for me. It was sure. something, um, you know, I'm a proud dad of three, but I'd had that dad bod for a long time. And just, you know, I have a very busy life and I was looking for something to, to be a different type of challenge and, and CrossFit yeah. definitely, I definitely found it within CrossFit for sure. For sure. For sure. Well, and I'll, I'll go ahead and let everybody know who's listening and watching here today. Uh, when Troy says busy life, we're actually catching him. He agreed to do this conversation with me during his lunch break. So he's actually sitting at his office. Uh, there's a chance his office phone might ring. So uh, we might get a, get a little bit of uh, business talk from Troy as well. But uh, Troy, I'm going to go ahead, break the ice with you know a couple of easier questions, CrossFit related questions, and we'll get to kind of know you a little bit more. But since joining CFE, uh, what has been your favorite CrossFit workout so far? It's uh, the favorite one's definitely going to have to be the 911 tribute or the 911 hero workouts. That yeah. was, uh, I was still brand new, I felt like, and uh, it was definitely a very challenging workout. Yeah. Um, but it was a really cool, I mean, I have the utmost gratitude and appreciation for anyone who serves this country. Um, and, and just with everything going on in the world today, this 9-11 seemed, you know, pretty significant. And, yeah. you know, uh, right before it, we had lost those 13 service members and it just yep. it just made it more important. So, yeah, for um, sure. it was by far my favorite so far. All right. Um, no, I totally agree with you. A lot of those a lot of the hero wads, I think uh, there's such a meaning behind them. Sure. Yeah. Beyond, beyond the physical exertion, there's a meaning that really you can tap into. Um, last year's 9-11 workout when we just did the uh, the steps just up and down on a box for 30 minutes. And man, I went to the zone of like heavy, deep emotions <laughs> as I was thinking about our, our servicemen and women uh, and those firefighters and police who lost their lives on 9-11-2001. Um, so... That is, those hero wads are also, they do have a high level of exertion, but I'm going to ask you this too. If that's one of your favorites so far, what's been the hardest CrossFit workout that you, uh, you know, remember 
having done in the last four months? Well, I tell you what, none of them are easy. You know, they yeah. say they say deep load week is easy, and it's not. Still, right. I still feel like each one of them is challenging. But uh, I would say I can't really give you a particular workout that I thought was more difficult than the others. But what I can tell you, I still kind of struggle with is is anytime it's a partner workout or a team workout, and it's because you know, everyone has their own pace as they go through it. And I tell you what, some of those guys and girls that's in that 5 a.m. and 6 a.m. class, I mean, they're they're absolutely amazing. And so trying to keep up with them in a partner workout or if if I look over and they're waiting on me to finish, that's that's what's challenging for me right now is because, yeah, I uh, I don't feel like I'm too far behind on the strength category, but the stamina and the endurance, these guys and these girls are good. So, yeah. That's awesome. I so I was actually uh, when I first started in about the first year at CFE, I was one of the five AMers, and um, my schedules had to switch a little bit, and so uh, so I am now just going more to the later morning stuff. Um, but uh, but yeah, that five AM crew, they're hardcore. I've actually thought about getting back in to the five AM class because uh, it's great to get it done first thing in the morning. I love um, it. It just uh, it, it was working for me to be able to come a little bit later for a while. And I thought, huh, I'll get some actual work done before my kids wake up instead of going and getting instead of going. See, that's, getting, that's what works for me is is yeah. I'm a father of three. You know, I do have a really busy uh, work life and everything. And, you know, that 5 a.m. class, uh, it kicks your butt first thing in the morning. But at the same time, you're done before everybody else even wakes up. So yep. it, it, it really does fit me very well. Yeah, exactly. So uh, when you first started CrossFit, obviously, there's a lot of uh, new movements. If you haven't done, especially some of the Olympic movements and barbell, you know, and there's a there's a lot of different stuff that we learn. Was this something you thought you were going to be able to do when you first signed up? I knew I could do a number of the lifts. Yeah. Uh, I knew there was one I and I, I could not do. <laughs> And actually, uh, proud to, to admit, but it's literally to this morning was the first time I've ever done a strict pull up by myself, like without Good banging. You, man. Bang. So I knew going into it that yeah. I was looking at these workouts and it'd be, you know, a number of pull ups. And I'm like, well, I ain't got that one. So, sure. But, you know, I was an athlete growing up. I've done a lot of weightlifting, but I mean, it's always been more bench press, upper body, different things like that. I've never really gotten into a lot of the other Olympic lifts. So I knew there'd be things that were challenging, Um, but I was confident I could do some. So it was, I don't know. I saw it as, uh, I saw it as, as a long-term goal, do what you can now and just keep trying to get better. Um, And I've enjoyed every second of it. So uh, when you hit that pull up, congratulations, good job on the strict. Uh, Did tell me, did you go over and ring the bell? Did you ring the PR bell? No, I did not. Man, did nobody not. rings that dang PR bell. <laughs> yeah. Hey, everybody, quick public service announcement. If you get a PR, <laughs> ding that bell. We all I should have. Celebrate. I so, should Troy, have. you got to go tomorrow morning and be like, hey, everybody, I'm a day late. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> I should have. It kind of caught me off guard, actually. We were, it was in basically in the warm up, and we were just, you know, kind of doing scrap pull ups and just warming up yeah. for today's workout. And, for some reason, I just pulled myself up and I was like, hey, I actually did it. So it yeah. was uh, it was an interesting moment for me. That's awesome. No, I, I got a uh, I got a clean and jerk PR uh, a few months ago and I walked over. To, first of all, I looked at that barbell like screw you. <laughs> Bam. And I walked over to that bell and I was afraid I was going to pull the rope off. I was that's so hilarious. <laughs> that's awesome. So so thinking thinking through as far as. Um, what you love about the wads, what you love about the Metcons. When you walk in and you see something in the programming, what what are the exercises that get you most excited? Uh, like when you well, see it on the board and you're like, yeah, heck yeah, that's my jam. Well, that's it. Is like, it would have to be the ones that I'm, I'm like I said, that 5 a.m. class and that 6 a.m. class, you've got some incredible athletes in there. So I feel like the only time I'm even relevant is at the things I'm good at. And it's like, if I'm not good at it, then a lot of other people in the class can beat me, uh, you know, hands down a lot of things. Uh, sure. But one of my strengths is bench press. So if I see that or any sort of bench press on there or push press, even yeah. uh, those get me excited. Cause I know those are ones that I can do really well at. And, uh, and I look forward to doing those actually. So, Very you know, cool. um, I'm in a class with people that can definitely squat and deadlift way more than I can. So if I yeah. see those, I'm, 
I'm I'm interested. I want to do it, but I know I'm definitely not going to be leading those classes. Do you? Uh, yeah. Who who do you who do you typically? Let's just call them out. Who do you pace off of? Uh, Patrick Cloud yep. uh, was in the 5 a.m. class until here recently. I haven't seen him in a while, but I mean, until about two weeks ago, I mean that he can squat a house, man. He he's a monster. He is crazy. His leg strength is is phenomenal. So, you know, <laughs> it would always. I mean, I think there was one morning. I literally asked him because, I mean, he had already passed what I could do. And I was like, hey, you need a spot. And he just looked at me like I was crazy. Like, no, I'm good. And he still went up another 80 to 100 pounds, I think. So he just kept going. I was like, well, no, you didn't need a spot. So (laughs) one of my last one of my last uh, times I was in the 5 a.m. with him because I would constantly pace off of him. And he's more fit than me. I'll just say it. But I would (laughs) I would pace off of Cloud because I'd be like, all right, if he's going to get 20 reps here, I know I should be able to hit 17 or 18 in that same time or 16. You know, I would, I would kind of have mentally, here's where I am in comparison. Um, but there was one workout where everybody, we were all facing in from the lanes, facing in. And he and I are standing right across from each other. And he just grinned and went, well, this will be fun. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it was just one of those moments like, oh, no, he's going to outpace me huge. That's hilarious. But he does. I'm telling you, he's, yeah, no, he's he, like strength. He's he's definitely in shape. So, yeah. He, and he's also one of those that the last time I did a partner workout, it's like he was sitting there waiting on me to finish mine before he could start. And you almost you almost feel bad for him because, you know, he's right. He's sitting there waiting. So that's great. So um, let's step away from like the current wands, the current CrossFit experience that you're having. Let me take you back in time a little bit. Um, How did you first find out about CrossFit Edwardsville? I mean, I wish I had a better story than just saying, you know, I was looking for, uh, you know, I was looking for a type of workout that held me accountable. Like, okay. uh, my office the, that I work at has an extremely nice gym in it. And, you know, there's all there's all these gyms out there. But I was looking for something that, you know, I'd gotten in this where like I'd start working out for 30 days, 60 days or I'd start a diet and I'd start it. But I mean, literally 30, 60 days later, something would come up or and I would just I'd yeah. quit. It was nothing. Yeah. It's like anything I would prioritize over that. So it's yep. one of those things I was looking for something to hold me accountable. And um uh, Obviously, I, I, I've heard of CrossFit or I had heard of CrossFit and, and sure. looked at different things. And literally one day just Googled CrossFit, you know, in Edwardsville, Illinois. And it popped, obviously, CrossFit. Say, hopefully, pops up. hopefully we won that SEO search yes. CrossFit in <laughs> Edwardsville. If not, we need to talk to our SEO team about like, uh, why is that's why true. Is the Fairview Heights CrossFit <laughs> gym showing up when they put in Edwardsville? <laughs> so I, uh, I did. I looked at it and looked on the link and... Um, kind of spent 10, 15 minutes on the website and then got off. And I really just thought about it for one afternoon, one evening. Yeah. yeah. And uh, literally the next morning I, I got back on there and sent in the request to kind of meet and greet and kind of learn more about it and see what it was all about. And yep. Uh, I think it was a day or two later, I met coach G and had our first conversation and I started right afterwards. And That's so it's, it's literally just, I was looking for something and, and, Thankfully, I think I did find it. I mean, I'm, I'm actually really enjoying uh, CrossFit more than I ever thought I would. Yeah, no, I um, I had circled the CrossFit world a little bit, watching some of the documentaries and seeing the games. And so I was very aware of it. And I was always like, oh, I think maybe in the future when I'm fit enough, I can go, <laughs> you know, I can go do that thing. And then I, I joined because um, I, had, I had looked up the various CrossFit gyms in the area and uh and they were doing a six-week challenge here at cfe at the time and i thought six weeks is enough because i there's going to be onboarding classes and then i'll be able to see if this is really for me and i fell in love fairly quickly i hear you i did too it yeah. was uh and i gotta lie those first those onboarding sessions i feel like were were brutal because i mean you got a coach sitting there like you know making sure your technique's right which is great i mean it yeah. really was but it's also you know, uh, those I did. I feel like those were were brutal in the beginning because I went from out of shape to hey, you got to be in shape pretty quickly. So sure, yeah. Well, you know what? I remember I did a um, this is non CrossFit related, but I had gotten a personal trainer um, when I joined another global gym. This was a few years ago now, and they came with like three personal training sessions, and um, my and he said, you know, what are your goals going in? What do you want to work on? And then he kind of just ran me through the stuff. 
And I felt like every one of those sessions, the goal was to kind of break me physically. <laughs> I, I didn't feel like it was a supportive thing. It wasn't like, hey, here's your limitations. Every time I, I was having, I was struggling walking the next day, struggling sitting down. I'm like, man, that's not what I want to do. I told you that wasn't my goals. Well, came to find out that was the routine he did for pretty much anybody. And I was like, that's not good. What I love about CFE was I kind of felt like, no, we're going to, we're going to push your pace, but we're still going to find out what your pace is. Oh, 100%. I mean, yeah. um, every one of the coaches at CrossFit so far, and, and when I was doing my onboarding, I'm pretty sure I had a one-on-one -on -one with almost at least each of the coaches and sure. it, they each, you could tell they would, they push you hard in certain areas that they could tell you were comfortable. And then, yeah. you know, in certain areas, but no, it was, I, I enjoyed the onboarding so much that after I was done, I still did another 12 sessions of one-on-one -on -one coaching while I was doing the 5 AMs. So wow. it's, it's one of those that I was really trying to get in shape but at the same time. I appreciated those one-on-ones sure. I mean, a lot. So, sure. So were you, uh, you kind of hinted at this. Were you scared when you first started? Like you didn't know what you were going to or like what helped you get past that? I don't know if scared is the right word. You know, I didn't, I'm one of those, like I've, failings never scared me. You know, I, you, you get into yeah. something, you know, that, that, that's never, I've always been an athlete. I've played sports, you know, and if, if you don't ever take the chance to fail, you're never going to truly succeed. So it's yeah. one of those things that, you know, I wasn't, I don't think scared is the right word, but I can tell you, maybe slightly intimidated, especially sure. when the first time I showed up to the five, or actually when I yeah. first started, it was, I was going to the 6 a.m. classes over the summer. Sure. And uh, man, I tell you what, when you walk in and you see some of these guys and these athletes and these girls, and it's like, it's, I, I don't, I don't want to say scared, but a little intimidating just to be able to keep up, I guess. Sure. So, and there are a few, I guess you'd say lifts that, you know, I'm like, well, I'm not sure I really want to do that. I'm not sure at 5 a.m. I want to be upside down doing handstand push-ups. Like, right, right. you know, but I mean, the more you do it, the more you start to love it, the more, I mean, I mean, it just, it almost becomes a lifestyle and it, yeah. it really does. Hopefully. And, uh, so, <laughs> yeah, I don't know about scared, but intimidated, there, a little bit in there. Sure. So, so what are... Besides the hero wad on 9-11, what might be another favorite memory or something from the last few months? Actually, I, I've got to pull my kids in here. Um, about, oh, six weeks ago. So they just finished. My, I have three boys. And, uh, hey, me two too, more. man. Three boys. What are their, <laughs> what are their ages? Uh, nine, six, and four. Oh, we need to get together. So mine are 11, eight, and four. All right. There you go. So our, our boys are going to have to hang. Oh, for sure. No, that sounds great. And I mean, our boys are wild. You can ask yeah. Coach Bailey. Bailey's been their coach almost every week, and it's hysterical. <laughs> but one of my favorite memories was the second or third workout of theirs. I'm not, I mean, it's just them. And uh, it's the first time they literally were going to do climb the rope. And my six year old jumped on there and climbed 15 feet, touched the tape up there, a six year old, and come back. He did it three times a row, first time he ever tried. And I'm oh, sitting there yeah. thinking, I can't get halfway up this rope. And right. he, I mean, he made it look, I mean, it looked like it was not like he'd been doing it for, and I mean, like I said, he's six and he that's made awesome. it look so easy. So that's actually, I mean, that's been one of my favorites. Yeah. Uh, I've got a really cool picture of my two oldest, uh, the six year old and my oldest, Max, uh, the, their first day there when they was doing tire flips. Oh yeah. And just the pure joy on their face, but also working out like it's, that's that's been fun getting my kids involved with it. Um, awesome. And a big piece of me really enjoying the hero the nine eleven workout yeah. is uh, my wife owns her own owns her own business, and a lot of times on weekends she's really busy. So when I did the nine eleven workout, all three of my boys came up there and they got mm -hmm. to watch everybody do it, including myself. And man, it kicked my butt. So like yeah. I had all three of them sitting there watching me do the whole thing. So it was um, there's been some cool like workouts but for me it's just been you know meeting the people that are in the classes but also getting my kids involved with it and it's been it's been fun that's cool um i remember i brought my boys for one of the open workouts uh it might have been last year at this point i like i they they start to bleed together a little bit um but anyway i was really struggling i was not going to finish under the cap uh <laughs> i was it was like right on the edge it was like a five seconds is what i was going to be over based on my current pace. One of the coaches went up to me and said, 
hey man, you know, you know, like literally in the middle of the wad, I'm sucking wind and they go, hey man, all three of your kids are watching. I'm not going to put any pressure on you, but is this the kind of guy you want him to see? <laughs> he literally walked away and was like, that's it. Boom, boom. Start pumping him out faster. I was ready to vomit, but I was like, I'm not going to fail in front of my boys. Exactly. And that's the point is I felt the exact same way that day. Yeah. And it's, you know, and I, I do like that. I mean, yeah. it's just one of those things. So, and you know, I love, you know, CrossFit Eversville. I mean, every single person I've met there, it's kind of like a family there too. Right? Yeah. I mean, everyone's been nice. And it's like, when you watch them, everyone has their own goals and their own, you know, initiatives almost to the point that it's impressive to watch some of these people. I mean, yeah. I'm more, it's crazy how big the 5 a.m. class has grown here in the last two months too. Cause yeah. we've got some new, some new to guys, new girls coming in and it's like, you can just see they're hitting the ground running. They're ready to go. And it's yeah. like, it's, it's interesting to watch. So sure. I, I really do like it. So what would, um, obviously that community is one of those things that kind of you enjoy, you see, and it's probably keeping you coming back too, because you mentioned accountability as well. But for you personally, uh, you know, one of the things we say here at CFE is help you look better, feel better and perform better. Like those are the three big markers for the CFE community. Um, what have you seen have been kind of the best benefits that you've personally experienced as an athlete, as a man, as a spouse, a parent, et cetera. Um, what are the benefits for you? The utmost really is, is the mental health thing. You know, mm. I, I'm not one of those, I don't step on a scale. I don't really care what I weigh. Of course, like anybody, I, I wanted to look better. Um, not that I, you know, had to drastically change how I looked. I just wanted to feel better. Sure. Uh, and the the benefit I was underestimating was kind of the mental health thing as in, yep. I am, you know, like I said, you know how it is. You got busy family, three boys. When you got it, if you got a busy career on top of it, you're for the most part, especially in the weird times we're living in right now. It's like life is stressful. Yeah. And, and a lot of times I felt stressed out prior to, I mean, now that I'm literally working out most weeks, 5 a.m., five mornings a week, it, I am much more relaxed throughout the day. Yeah. And yeah. I'm telling you, it's just a totally different feel. So that's the one I was underestimating is kind of the mental health side. Sure. Um, my clothes fit totally different. Good. <laughs> uh, it is good. It's interesting, though, because, like I said, I'm not one that steps on a scale. Yeah. So I went back and saw uh, Coach James with – I forgot the name of his little machine there that basically tests everything on you. Yep. Um, and uh, I forgot when it was. Being long, long story short, I went back, and I was almost two belt loops down. Like, I literally – and so I expected to jump on this thing, at least have lost some weight. And I had actually yeah. gained two pounds. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it was like my clothes fit entirely different. Um, and uh, but it's been interesting because it's I do feel like in a lot of ways, my, my entire body shape has changed uh, compared to what it was before. For sure. Um, and the interesting thing is, like I said, I've, I used to work out and I, I've always been big into upper body stuff. So it's one of those things. But now it's like I'm starting to see my legs more defined, my body, yeah. everything. Like it's it's interesting because it's new to me. Like I've never right. focused on some of these areas that I'm that I'm noticing a difference, and it's 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 nice. Like it right. is good to see the results. And you know, like you said in the beginning, I'm not five months in, and right. I'm seeing results more than I was expecting. Like right. So it's, I mean. Like I said, I love it so far. That's awesome. No, uh, leg leg strength is definitely something I noticed too, um, especially in that first six six to nine months. And uh, I saw somebody. Uh, I'm in a dads who lift group on Facebook, and and uh, <laughs> everybody like once a week. Oh, brother, today's leg day, you know. And the CrossFitters are looking at them like every day is leg day. Every day is leg day. <laughs> in, cross, in CrossFit world, that's all the time. <laughs> it is all the time. And that was, you know, that's, I really, I guess you'd say, I like how I kind of, even though I was excited to get in and, and, and work out as much as possible, I, I did start off only doing the three days, you know, three workouts a week. Yep. And I'm really glad I did because I did that until it was really my legs that would get so sore I couldn't do anything else. Yep. Uh, but it was almost like that's when I knew to start going to the unlimited or to, to doing more workouts is when yeah. I could get to Sunday and my legs wouldn't be sore. And then it was like by Saturday afternoon, I could actually feel my legs. So it's yeah. been one of those that 
it's uh it's been it's been fun but i tell you what every day is leg day yep 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 well uh so let's go back a little further man let's let's talk about troy growing up what was your up give us a little bio on you what was your (laughs) upbringing like what was your childhood like what are some you know maybe a special memory that really shaped who you are today sure um I was born and raised in Franklin, Kentucky. I have the Southern accent. I ain't going to lose it. Uh, my parents still <laughs> live on the, <laughs> parents still live on the same little farm I grew up on. Uh, it's right at 15 acres. So, you know, I, I grew up outside. I wanted yeah. to be outside. I wanted to ride four wheelers. You know, I wanted, you know, hunt and fish all the time. That's really, uh, that's really all I did other than, yeah. you know, I, I absolutely love baseball and football. Um, that's the two sports I played in high school. So yeah. I, you know, um, I don't remember spending much time inside. I, I yeah. love being outside. Yeah. Um, you know, after high school, I did. I went to Murray, Kentucky. I went to Murray State University. Okay. Uh, really enjoyed that. Uh, that's where I met my wife. And um, she uh, she took college a little more serious than I did. So it was one of those <laughs> when, I, when I knew it was time uh, to buckle down and try to graduate at the same time she did. That's kind of when our professional lives kicked in gear. Sure. Uh, after school, we went. What's to, her name? I'm sorry. Uh, Molly Ferguson. Molly. And uh, she uh, she went for interior design and she has started her own business and, and really does really well. So um, but she had a job lined up and was ready to graduate. And I uh, I I knew it was serious when I, I said, OK, well, I've got a lot of hours to make up to graduate at the same time. So sure. Uh, but anyway, I, I was able to do it. And we moved to uh, Nashville, Tennessee first. And uh, which absolutely we love living in Nashville. We both yeah. love music, love concerts, love, you know, love going out. And I mean, there's no better city for that. So Nashville's great. It is great. And uh, long story short, like I said, her family was from this area. And um, when we were in Nashville, we was in Nashville probably about five years. And uh, we found out we were pregnant with our first kid. Um, and simultaneously, I actually got with the company I was working with a promotion offer to move up to the St. Louis area. So okay. to be closer to her family, you know, we were looking at having kids. It was we we ended up making that move in uh, 2013. Yeah. Um, so that's what brought us to the area. Um, okay. Like I said, we initially moved over to Kirkwood, which is a very nice area uh, over in St. Louis. But yeah, like I said, growing up on a farm, Kirkwood's a little busy for me. I was, you know, a little uncomfortable. I wanted something a little slower than. Yeah. And that, I mean, that's a busy city. So we uh, ultimately ended up over here in Edwardsville and we absolutely love Edwardsville. Yeah. Um, since I, then, I know you had told me that and, before, before we had started recording, you had told me the Kirkwood to Edwardsville thing. Um, and, and you and I joked that Edwardsville is kind of like a Illinois version of St. Louis, like a, yes. like a uh, Metro East version of St. Louis where you're like, Hey, we're close, we're close to the crowd, but not in it. Um, and so that's kind of a nice element and it's, it's has quite a bit of progress, but you're right. You can kind of separate out a little bit too. Sure. You know, it pretty much has everything you need, but you know, Bush stadium is 30 minutes away. That's right. really, <laughs> that's really what I need to go. Like I said, I love baseball. It's, it's yeah. definitely one of my favorite sports. So, uh, being this close to the St. Louis Cardinals is a huge benefit too. So. Sure. I'm sure this season was a little disappointing for you, but after that big streak, you know, the streak was awesome. The streak was, uh, the streak awesome, was awesome. And to have it end with a single wild card game. Crazy. Yes. And to lose it, you know, with a walk off. I mean, yeah, it was, it was kind of a rough ending. So it's the one time of a year that baseball applies football rules. And <laughs> true. Like, hey, one game, you're done. That's it's, true. That's never baseball ever. So, yeah, wild card games are intriguing. Um, who's your Who's your football team? You know, I don't really, ha- I don't watch a lot of pro football. Um, I didn't expect that in Kentucky. I didn't expect you to say no. That. And I, I, and I, 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 if you're, I love Kentucky basketball. So when we're talking about basketball college, I, I'm a UK fan through and through. But you know, uh, my wife's family and uh, they're big into Notre Dame. And so, okay. uh, you know, we've been married over 13 years now. Been together almost 15. Like right. I have come to love some Notre Dame football. So. Sure. Well, tell, tell us a little bit more about your family now. So you mentioned your wife. You mentioned kind of what she's doing. Interior Is she still doing the interior design? Yeah, she, she actually uh, she started her own design firm. Uh, it's just herself, but she's she's doing really well. She's had that going about four years now. Okay. Um, like I said, Max is our oldest. Uh, he's nine years old. Uh, Will is our middle child. He's six. 
and then Jack is our four year old. And awesome. uh, so everyone's busy. Um, yeah. We are very active here in the Edwardsville, Glen Carbon area. Uh, my kids and, and our church is St. Boniface. So we get heavily involved with them and a lot sure. of different activities. Um, actually, after moving here, I am one of those. I decided to go back to SIUE. I went back and got my MBA. So it's, nice. you know, uh, I feel like we have definitely jumped into the community in the last. For, for someone years. who struggled with college the first round to jump in and get your <laughs> MBA, dude, that's awesome. Yeah, I did. I tell you what, it, <laughs> I did much better the second time around. Let's put it sure. that way. My, well, I'm sure there was a little partying. Different, so. <laughs> Um, it definitely. It's, it was interesting how much better I did when, when I actually paid attention. So that's funny. Um, any of your boys involved in sports right now? Yeah, actually Max, my oldest, he, uh, he's not, he plays and has for the last couple of years with the Edwardsville Tiger, uh, baseball group. Okay. Um, he, he also was saying B this is their, he, this is the first year he's old enough. They have, uh, this is the, the third grade. It's a basketball going on right now. And yeah. especially in the times of COVID, I'm, very thankful they they are playing basketball this year uh so and it's um he he's historically played you know soccer through the ymca and, and different sure. things so he my old max he, he wants to play everything he wants to do everything you know he's, it's, he's nine you said he's nine okay so and then will who is six uh he's he's played baseball over here in the maryville uh maryville league yep uh he's played soccer he's he you know he's been old enough to do all of the ymca uh, sports basically for the last year or two. And he's, you can tell he's really into it. Them yeah. two are, they're built totally different. But the interesting thing is, is, is Will's bar, like what's acceptable is whatever Max can do. So it's oh, like, well, sure. he literally just tries to beat Max in everything. And it's, it's a really, no really, I have no idea what competitive brothers are like. <laughs> it's really fun to watch. <laughs> uh, and then yes, Jack, uh, we got Jack, Jack, he, uh, he's our four year old and man, he's, you know, he is just, he's happy 24 seven. Yeah. This kid just runs around and he, to be four, he can keep up with both of his older brothers. Yeah. Uh, it's, he is definitely an interesting piece of the pie there. Cause he That's is, cool. uh, his personality is really good for the other two. Yep. <laughs> uh, he calms them down a little bit. I feel like, Yep. Uh, but definitely um, when he wants to be wild, keep up with them. He has no problem <laughs> keeping up with them. So. That's awesome. Well, uh, so tell me, tell me, Troy, about uh, a little bit more about your career. Obviously, you mentioned you're there in, in the Maryville uh, area in your office right now. But tell us about your career, what you do for work, and then tell us what you do for hobbies outside of sure these sports. But outside of fitness, what do you do for hobbies? Um, all right, I'll start off with, with, with the career here. Actually, I work for Prairie Farms, uh, Prairie okay. Farms Dairy, and we just moved our corporate office here in Edwardsville. Um, my title's a little a little lengthy, but I am uh, I'm the corporate director of operations. Uh, I'm also the director of continuous improvement, uh, but the main role I do is director of environmental health and safety. So my wow. main thing, I, main thing, You're I need do, an MBA for that man. Exactly, I had to give you a heads <laughs> up. It, uh, the, my main role is uh, OSHA compliance and EPA compliance for all of our processing facilities. Sure, sure. Uh, and uh, about three years ago, I took on the uh, the education, the continuous improvement piece. Uh, basically teaching all of our uh, management teams uh, different ways to improve manufacturing efficiencies and, and Six Sigma strategies and different, you know, lean manufacturing strategies and things like that. So I wear multiple hats uh, for Prairie Farms, but I, it's a great company. I really do enjoy what I do. Um, and, and like I said, moving here and being part of the Edwardsville community too was, was, was a huge benefit. Yeah. Hobbies still for me, uh, the little bit of time I get to spend on myself is, is I do, I love hunting and fishing. Uh, okay. I, I, I love bow hunting, uh, archery hunting for deer. Yeah. And then I love my oldest Max loves to fish. So it's also, it's like anytime we get, we, you know, I love to go yeah. fishing. Uh, and beyond that, I love to play golf now. Like baseball used to be my thing, but you know, golf's that sport you can kind of play until you literally can't walk. So it's right. one of those that that's, if I have any time for myself, it's going to be still, like I said, it's gotta be outside. I'm, I'm either yeah. hunting, fishing or playing golf. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Other than at 5 a.m., I'm at CrossFit Edwardsville almost every morning. So that's right. So, um, all right. So let's talk about take me a little deeper here for our last couple of minutes. Um, any mantras or mottos or life philosophies that kind of guide you through your life? Um, 
it's part of my career, but it's just because that's how I'm hardwired. I mean, it's just continuous improvement. As in, yeah. it doesn't matter where you're at today. It doesn't matter where you start something. I mean, you just keep working to get better. Yeah. Um, you know, and that's 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 across life. I mean, yeah. you know, you keep working to get better. Your your physical abilities, your mental abilities, your job. You know, your relationships with people, your parenting, like. Trust me, as a parent, I feel like I fail all the time, but I never give up. So it's one of those, it's, you know, every day, man, <laughs> it's not a, it's not a motto. It's just how I'm hardwired. It's like, like I said earlier, it's, I'm not scared to fail. It's, you just keep going. You just yeah. keep, keep trying to get better at whatever's important to you and, uh, and just keep giving it a hundred percent. I mean, keep trying. So yeah. as long as, if you truly want to do something and you keep trying, you will eventually, you will do it. So, yeah, for sure. So what what is your uh, fitness wise and what's your number one goal with that? Keep trying, keep improving, keep getting better, keep going, keep working. What's your number one goal in fitness at this at this season? Well, my next goal is the Murph Challenge. So next Memorial Day, Dude, gonna... that ain't that ain't that ain't <laughs> a small goal. <laughs> well, that's my next one. So next Memorial Day or next May, you're like that's that's my next goal. You know. All right. Well, I'm I hope you do it. I'm hoping to do it prescribed, but yeah. like I said, this morning was my first pull up. So, and there's quite a few of those in that workout. So we'll, yeah. we'll see how far I can get there, how close I can get there by, you know, however many months from now. So yep. that's the only other goal I have in mind right now is to keep. All right, man. That's a good one. That's hardcore, dude. Um, good for you. So, so big question here. Um, let's look at like, again, you just mentioned this, keep working, keep improving. So I think that might, guide this next question for you but if you could make just one statement to the world like if you could put one thing on a billboard that thousands or millions of people would see what would that message be or what would that billboard say i mean it's gonna be something along the lines just do it like just if it's if, if you're gonna take the time to do it like do it big just you gotta mm. put the effort behind it like it's you know, if, if it's something that you're just going through the motions doing, just don't even do it. Like it's one of those, if you're going to, if you're going to say you're going to do it, you're going to put the time, if you're going to waste the time to do it, do <laughs> it. Like there is no sense in, 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 you know, life's too short. It's like, if you're, if you're not going to put the effort in, don't do yeah. it, you know, yeah. find something else you want to do and, For sure. uh, and, and keep getting better at that. So it's one of those that, I mean, that's going to be different for every single person. It's sure. Okay. Whatever you enjoy, whatever you want out of life, do it. Yeah. I love it. So as you're looking ahead and you're thinking, I want to do that, I want to do it. What excites you most about your future? Or what are you most looking forward to in the next three, five, 10 years in Troy's world? Seeing how far I can go. I mean, awesome. I don't, I, I don't put a ceiling on myself. You know, I am a very realistic person, but at the same time, I'm not lazy. Like, I don't yeah. mind putting the, the effort in. And it's like, I, I'm very curious to see where I'll be in the next three, five to 10 years, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. as a person, but also as a parent, as a husband, you know, as a yeah. Christian. Like, there's so many, like, I like to think in 10 years, I'll be, you know, way better than what I am today. Sure. Uh, but I'm pretty happy today. So that's, that's awesome, man. It is. It's one of those that, just keep trying. I love it. I love it. Well, Troy, I'm going to say thank you for uh, for joining us today. It was awesome conversation. It's great to get to know you. I do plan to, uh, I will reach out to you separately. We need to hang our kids together. For sure. And, for sure. Uh, and I think you and I would have a lot of, uh, a lot of fun conversations in common. So, um, <laughs> Having three boys, I'm sure that's the truth. I'm sure. Uh, I, <laughs> But thank you so much for sharing a little bit of your story with us today and really appreciate you coming on, brother. Sure. No, yeah. thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, of course. So everybody, uh, again, thank you to Troy, but thank you to you all as well for, for listening, for watching, for hanging with us for this little bit. Um, you know what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to plug, if you're new to CrossFit Edwardsville or you're new to the Edwardsville community, new to CrossFit, or you just want to learn a little bit about who we are, what we do, um, you can always do research about us online, you know, Google us and you'll see all of our five star Google reviews. Uh, you can find us on Facebook. You can find us on Instagram as well. And those, as you know, um, on Instagram and Facebook are at CrossFit Edwardsville. But um, if you want to go, just go to our website, 
CrossFitEdwardsville.com, uh, there is a big old book a call link and it's a free no sweat conversation. And uh, we would love to invite you to be a part of that when you're ready to learn what your personal CrossFit journey would look like. Again, just go to CrossFitEdwardsville.com, book that no sweat conversation. And Troy, I'll just say one more time, man, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks again. Thanks for having me. It was a good yeah. time. Awesome. So everybody, as I always like to say, go out there, have a championship day.